My name is Khan Pham. I'm the state representative for Oregon House District 46. I'm also the daughter of Vietnamese refugees and um, I'm a longtime community organizer here in the Jade District where we're located right now. So we're located here at Orchards of 82nd, which is a four-story affordable housing complex with a community center at the bottom. And this also houses APANO, a community-based organization that really advocates and organizes with Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders to build power for our communities in Oregon. This neighborhood that we're in right now, the Jade District, is one of the most diverse neighborhoods in the city and the state and it has one of the largest Asian American and Pacific Islander communities with also large African immigrant and Latino immigrant populations as well. It's actually been really revitalized by the influx of immigrants. Um, you've seen 82nd Avenue, which is now really a vibrant corridor with a lot of immigrant owned small businesses and restaurants. And now we're at risk of losing this community that we revitalized and, and really made so vibrant. Now rising rents um, are also pushing our communities out further and further east, even outside the city of Portland. Well, for one example, Douglas Square Apartments is an apartment building that historically was kept fairly affordable. It was a crucial landing place for many Asian immigrants who needed a cheap place to rent. Once it was sold to a California investment group, they promptly started raising their rents and displaced many families who had long lived there. So we started door knocking on the apartment buildings. And it's a very diverse building with um, five different languages spoken. And we had, um, so we had to arrange multilingual tenant meetings and we were able to win um, a year and a half rent stabilization for the community. And I think that really showed the power of grassroots organizing where alone, nobody can fight against this, but united, even across different ethnicities and across different backgrounds, we were able to confront much more powerful and moneyed interests. So Apano has played a crucial role in being able to organize community members to be able to advocate for really critical policy changes. For example, the fair access to housing policy that we pass at the city level, as well as the renters protections, such as the 90 day relocation assistance. All of these laws have been really crucial bulwarks. I mean, they're not enough and we're still seeing a an epidemic of gentrification and displacement, but it's, I don't even know where we'd be if we didn't have these critical protections that were passed. As a community organizer here in the district, I was a part of building the coalition to win the Portland Clean Energy Fund, which is a ballot measure initiative to institute a 1% business license surcharge on retail corporations that make over a billion dollars. And then we take that money, about $60 million a year, and we put it in a special fund that prioritizes climate justice investments for low-income communities and communities of color in Portland. I'm not sure why Portland is considered a green paradigm. I think it seems like a typical American city. I would just say that there has historically been a lot of inequities because along the waterfront, a lot of these investments have been made in the wealthier areas. Only recently with the rise in the unhoused population have people suddenly seen their kind of pristine green zones infiltrated by the realities of the rest of the community. So uh, I think it's so critical that we are constantly developing grassroots leaders who are then ready and equipped to be able to, to be leaders in whether elected leaders or also community leaders in shaping the solutions that our communities need.